Well, recently I broke my go-kart engine, so today I got to install a new one. So this will be a video on how to install a brand new Predator 212 on a go-kart. As you can see, this one's a bit used and it's not out of the box, but the process should be pretty much the same. So the main things you're gonna need, when you put one of these things on, you're gonna need the engine, obviously. You're gonna need some oil. You're gonna need a clutch and you're gonna need a chain. So the first step I gotta do is put the clutch on this bracket right here you'll see it line up in there and then it should just be able to slide on just like that and then there'll be a screw that you can uh screw in right there and then that'll keep it on all right and the next step will be able to take the side with the clutch and you're gonna place it towards this outer wheel with the chain and you're gonna line up the engine with these four slots so you're able to screw it on so slide it up in here and hopefully I can pivot the engine downward towards the chain so I don't have to take the chain off. Got to tilt the engine closer in like this so you can get it in on the chain and then when you push it back down into place it'll become taut like that and then so then you don't have to take the whole chain apart which saves you a lot of time and it makes it a lot easier to tilt the engine in and then so you can get the chain on there taut without having to actually take everything apart then once the uh chain and the clutch is on all you're gonna want to do is just obviously make sure it's filled up with at least like i think a, it's a quart it's like 1.1 quarts of oil and then really all you need to do from that point is just screw all four of these in and each one of these slots, you'll make it come up through each one of those holes on the front right there. And then on the back in those two spots. And then the engine's on good. And then really the complicated part comes with putting on the throttle and the um, kill switch. And you're gonna put them with this part, the open part down and not up. And then these will go in on the bottom. You don't need power tools, but I would recommend them because it's a lot of really tight spaces and you gotta screw them in there pretty far, so. So as you can see, the mounting points are down here, that one, right here, this one, and the two ones all the way up there. And then you're gonna tighten those all the way into there pretty tight and the engine will be on. Hold it up on the top with a 13 wrench and then just use a 13 ratchet underneath to tighten it. And then that will get all of them on pretty fast. Sure way to get all of them on. Now that the uh, engine is on the go-kart, everything will basically work except you won't have any um, throttle linkage and the kill switch if you have a kill switch mounted up won't work which is pretty simple i forgot to do this but you would you would loosen this one up a bit put that in between and then you would tighten it back down to to ground it and then you connect this up in here which i'll show you how to do later so you don't always have to do what i did but to make it easier to reach all the throttle stuff i uh disconnected the gas tank and i completely took off the air filter which is super easy you just unscrew these two nuts real quick and that comes right off as you uh, pop off this line too and the gas tank is just hold on by a screw there and two nuts on these two on the other side and that'll let you have a lot more space to work on it the basics of hooking up your throttle on is that this is idle and that when this comes like this that's full, that's full gas. So just this slight moving piece back here is gonna determine your throttle. But usually the best way is to hook up the throttling to where it comes back here through like one of these, you'll cinch it and then it pulls on this this way. And when it pulls that, it pushes this and this will be the final product is that that will go down. So this is my old throttle cable setup which has this piece at the end and it has this wire at the end which is very frayed and i also use this zip tie to keep it from coming apart wherever your uh, throttle is linked to whichever bar is linked in there this is where you're gonna put this through like that 
and then once it's in there like that it shouldn't really come out unless you push it on a certain way that's what's going to keep it in there so that when you press the throttle down it'll pull the cable slightly like this you'll see it give the cable a bit of a tug yeah i forgot since this engine isn't a normal engine this is also basically showing you how to reroute the throttle to have no governor on so you'll take a spring like this which came with my old engine and you'll hook it up through one of these and so that when you're not on full throttle it brings it back to just idling again using this spring so to set it up what you're going to do is you're going to go all the way to idle and so the spring is tall at idle so once you pull this thing to the left the spring is going to be getting stretched so it's going to obviously want to come back to where it originally was at which is at idle and not any less or any lower than that so yeah i just slipped that spring in there and now you can see that when i push this to go to max throttle it comes immediately back to idle because the spring is brain compressed now you're just going to use this bolt over here and you're going to just tighten it all the way up some so that it's pretty tight and then you know that's not going anywhere and now the throttling is almost done for doing the actual throttle if you don't have any cable you're gonna have to get some like bicycle cable or some throttling cable but you're gonna want to put it in one of these clamps so it clamps it here so that the actual line itself will stay taut in position but when you pull this this inner line will be the one that's actually moving when you press the throttle down i just went the uh sketchy way and i used a zip tie to get this bike line stuck through there even though it was so frayed it was a disaster but once that's in there then you can move this up to here and you can pinch this line in so that only this part's actually moving when you pull on the throttle what will be is you'll like lay down i guess and you'll push on the throttle with your foot and you'll look over here to see if you have the full range of motion which it did but it didn't go back to idle, so that's an issue. Maybe it's just scraping up here. Maybe this has got to be tightened again. Maybe this got stretched out. But yeah, so you got to do tests like that where you push it down and you basically want to see this go all the way in and then you want to see it go all the way back to idle, which mine did not, which means I just have a little bit of tweaking, but that's always normal. So I tightened the spring over there a little bit and now I guess um, I'll give it a try. There we go, and that's what you want. So you want it to come back all the way down to full gas, and then you want it to cut off all the way to idle pretty quickly. And now all I really have to do is wire up the kill switch, which isn't necessary, but anytime you're driving the go-kart, it's a nice luxury to have something that you can switch here on and off, instead of having to reach back here to turn it on and off. All right, so I just took out one of the old engine mounts so I can push it through this and I can ground the uh, kill switch real quick just by putting that in there. So then, yeah, this is probably not the best job of it, but then once you have the kill switch in there, it should be all the way in there and it should be snug in between those two green pieces. And so now it's grounded and it's in the two positives right there on the black wires. So now hopefully I'll reconnect the gas tank and the air intake and then i'll start it up and make sure i did everything correct 